uh, our media guest this week is is my friend Alex McDaniel from for the win uh, USA Today. Uh, How are you doing this morning? Thank you for waking up and, and joining us. I'm good. I, mean, I was already up anyway. When you have a kid, like you're just naturally up at five. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I know how that goes unfortunately uh i you know i we, we talked a little bit yesterday but I, I was i've got a million questions i want to ask you uh most notably though uh why do they call the egg bowl the egg bowl so this actually goes back to um the toxicity of the rivalry really um in the 20s there was a game where uh the city state won or actually Ole Miss won and there was a big fight on the field. Somebody lit something on fire. Someone broke a chair over someone's head. Both schools, student, uh, you know, I guess the uh, student government at the time or whatever they called that, came together and said, we need to make this more of a brotherhood type thing. We need to make this friendlier and uh, not a mean rivalry. So they came up with the idea to have a trophy. Um, when the trophy came back, it was supposed to be a football. But back then, most uh, trophies for football don't just look like an egg. So they ran with it, and it was known as the Battle for the Golden Egg. And around the seventies, I believe, they just shortened it to Egg Bowl. There you go. Matt, I hope Matt was taking notes as he as he prepares our <laughs> trophies for our bowl games this year. Uh, if you shave it like an egg, we might get a name. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it, the, the actual reason I brought Alex on this morning was uh, you may have guessed by me asking a, a, an Ole Miss question right off the bat, but she's a an Ole Miss grad. Uh, native of West Ar West Memphis, Arkansas, which is a confusing place, I think, to be from, because it sounds like it's from multiple places. Uh, but in any case, you're going to the Grove this weekend. We get a lot of questions about people going to the Grove, and I thought I'd bring you on to, to talk about it because it really is kind of a cool tailgate experience that not many people get. Uh, you know, what, one of the things we mentioned when we talked about this earlier was that uh, your, your experience tailgating at Ole Miss was kind of affected by your presence in the marching band there. Uh, I'm curious, uh, what was an Ole Miss game day like for you before you were able to tailgate at the Grove? And how is it different now that you can tailgate and have fun before the game? <laughs> um, I don't want to say one is more fun than the other. I loved my time in marching band. It was wonderful. Uh, I'm actually sitting with the band at the Alabama game this weekend. They're, they have my heart. Um, you know, I wasn't from Mississippi. So when I got to school, I didn't really know much about the traditions. I wasn't, you know, kind of a stereotypical college student I was a little younger than everybody I started school at 17 was definitely not in the party culture or anything so the Grove didn't mean that much to me and so game day was just long and you would be walking around in these heavy band uniforms all day in the Mississippi heat which was terrible um and you'd play your pep rallies and you'd go to the game and by the end of the day you were just exhausted you just wanted to go to bed um my first kind of experience just dealing with what this culture was about was after I think our second home game in 2004. Uh, and I, I was walking through the Grove and some clearly drunk man handed me like two $20 bills if I would just play something on my piccolo for him. So I did. <laughs> I just took 40 bucks. I was like, okay, this is, this is fun. Um, you know, when my time in band was over, I was a senior in school. I was editor of the school paper. I couldn't do both. So my parents decided in 2009 to get a tent. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't really know anything about it. Um, and it just turned out to be so fun and one of the loveliest things that I've ever done with my family and something that really meant a lot to us. And so, yeah, you know, I can't say I miss like dressing up in cocktail dresses and heels. That's just unreasonable and not practical, but I still do it because tradition. But uh, yeah, I think it's a a really fun thing. And you got to remember too, I went to Ole Miss like at a time when we weren't winning a lot of games. So um, our saying has always been, we may not win every game, but we never lose the party. So that was always kind of the, the thing we had to fall back on was, it doesn't matter how bad this game is going to go. It doesn't matter that we've won no SEC games this season. At least we know we've got the party, but now we've got both. So it's going to be chaos. Uh, I was at uh, the Georgia Tech game earlier this year uh, when Ole Miss was up there and they, they won that game, which was great. Uh, they also seem to party very well before the game, too. Uh, it, I, my understanding is that it seems like the official tailgate uniform of Ole Miss fans is a uh, dress and white boots. I don't know. You said something about you said something about heels, but I was getting a different vibe from from the crowd at Ole, at Ole Miss uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah, I, the fashion has changed over the years, but typically, generally speaking, you you dress in your Sunday best, especially for students. With alumni, it's a little more relaxed. You know, I don't see a lot of. Uh, moms like me out there getting in the mini skirts and the heels very often, but 
the general idea is a cocktail dress, some sort of heel, your best pearls, designer bag, now it's clear designer bag. Um, and the boys are dressed up in you know, bow ties and usually wrinkled khakis. They never show out the way the women do. Um, that's just the truth. Sorry. And uh, yeah, and you spend all day in the Mississippi heat dressed like you're ready to go out on the town. And so, yeah, again, I do not miss that part of it. But um, it's only been recently over the past few years that I've noticed fashion is being relaxed a little bit in the Grove. I'm seeing more jerseys and seeing more where it looks like an actual football game and actually people tailgating um, in the traditional sense. So I don't know, but yeah, that's, that's what you have to do. If you're a student, you got to dress up. No, that's uh, I, I've actually never been to Oxford myself. Uh, I've not been to the Grove, so I'm just winging it here and pretending I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but my impression is that when you, walk up on it it is a very almost intimidating scene to like look at this just mass of people in tents like what is there a good game plan for if you're looking to peruse around the grove like how to navigate it best i mean there's certainly they have uh, navigational lanes you can go down but if you're looking for a tent that's where it usually gets tricky you know the night before the game we have something called the grove rush on friday night which is where um everybody who's getting ready to set up their tailgate is on the edge of the grove and, and when it's five o'clock you're allowed to run and claim your spot um and at that time i mean these tents are right next to each other you have a few lanes to keep traffic moving but you don't have a lot of room to roam you're pretty much limited to your little uh gazebo tent and so if you have somebody in if you're visiting a tailgate and they're in the middle of the grove it's very hard to find them and it's usually directions like you know past the zebra tent there's a whole zebra tent and you know take a left at this porta potty and and do that and get there and so it's it's tough i was lucky that our tailgate had always been on the edge of the grove kind of the entrance to the university so we were able to just kind of bring people into the party and it was fun but this year we don't this is the first year we haven't had a tailgate so i've got to be that person roaming around my own school trying to find it well, I hear Stephanie. I think we have a couple scouts going to Ole Miss this weekend, uh, so we'll they'll be lost too. Don't worry, they'll find they'll find <laughs> it in the crowd. Uh, awesome. you know, when it comes to Ole Miss football, uh, we are hearing a lot of chatter about the Rebs this year, and they have not played in a Citrus Bowl before. They did come down playing a kickoff game against Florida State a couple of years ago that uh, didn't go so well for them. Uh, how are you feeling about your alma mater this year? And do you think that are you buying what they're selling? It's just wild, you know, and especially, you know, I have to go down on Friday and speak to journalism students, and these are students who don't really know any different, like they're freshmen and sophomores, and like the lane train is all they know, and I just want to be like, look, I lived through the Orgeron era, okay, at Ole Miss, I, I lived through the NCAA investigation, um, so I think it's just weird to watch from afar, because Ole Miss fans have this great like, self-deprecating way about them, where it's like, even if we're good enough, we're still not going to win because state's going to step in, or in our case, Arkansas will step in in 2015, fourth than 25, but I'm not bitter. Um, you know, we just, it's this idea that nothing's ever going to work out for us. And I think Lane was such a good hire, culturally speaking. He's the closest to an Ole Miss fan, I think, that the school's ever had in terms of a coach. Um, and so I think just him alone has kind of riled everybody up and gotten them excited. Certainly the winning helps, but it's hard to find, you know, an alumnus my age who's willing to totally lean into it. And not because we think they're bad, but because we are convinced the universe conspires against us to win anything ever. So when we do, it's just stunning. Um, I, I, your I, cautious optimism is warranted probably. Yeah, I don't even know if it's optimism. It's just cautious. <laughs> That's just like, I don't want to, nobody wants to get excited and then be let down. But I would say this year is one of the more fun years I've had following the team and you know i haven't been to a game all season which is rare for me if i move to the east coast unfortunately um i mean i love it on the east coast just that i don't get to go to games so i'm excited to get back in the atmosphere and actually act like a normal school that wins games <laughs> well don't get too used to it but in any case <laughs> uh, when, you know one of the questions we're asking the the scouts and members of the committee today uh is to you know, the poll question we have each week and we're having a vote for their favorite place that they've scouted or seen a game. Obviously, it's a little bit different when you're covering a game or attending a game as a fan as opposed to scouting uh, where they have no fun at all. Uh, <laughs> but what's your favorite place where you've uh, where you've seen a game, maybe uh, Vaught Hemingway excluded? Yeah, so, you know, if just talking stadiums, I would have to say, you know, Death Valley's 
incredible. And even when we're, when we're talking tailgating, and that's really hard for me to say as an old fan because I was raised to think LSU was, we just, we never say anything positive about this. Um, I, it's just an incredible year. And I think it's a song Saturday night. It can be very interesting. And I think stadium, but I've been to Sugar Bowls over the past few years, and I love going to the world around it and being in that stadium is so cool um you know but nothing really beats being in a good college stadium so i gotta go with death valley on this this isn't going online is it i don't want anyone to quote me no I, well nikki don't cut this <laughs> one. Don't this one. We, uh, joking, joking. Uh, i think i heard you mention sugar bowl in there uh i know that you guys have not been down here to orlando but if we see you down down here uh, we'd love to see you as well. Uh, bring the family. It's a great place to take a vacation. Our friends at Visit Orlando will love me saying that. And with that, <laughs> I will uh, let you sign off. Thank you again for joining us awesome. this morning. I appreciate the time and have a great day and a great week and have fun at the Grove. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And, uh, and now I'm going to